Howdy! In this video, let's now do a quote-unquote real-world example when dealing with two-dimensional kinematics. So, let's say that a terrorist is driving a truck filled with oil along the x-axis. It starts at the origin at t equals zero with an initial velocity of v1 and a constant acceleration of a1. A drone is launched from the point x equals negative l and y equals h at t equals zero. It has an initial velocity with the magnitude vm aimed at an angle theta above the x-axis. The drone is programmed to have a horizontal acceleration such that ax is beta plus alpha t. The acceleration also has a usual vertical component due to gravity. And so it's going to tell me that my uh, gravity, your ay will be a negative g because it's pointed down, and your axis, notice how your positive y-axis is up, because gravity is pointed down, it will be a negative g. But we'll get there in a sec. It says, obtain an equation relating the variables, which could be solved to find the necessary conditions in order for the drone to hit the truck. Solve for the necessary conditions in order for the drone to hit the truck, um, and solve for the necessary value of alpha if beta is 0, L is 0, Vm is 0, and A1 is 0. Okay, that's a long problem. That's a pretty long-winded problem, too, not going to lie. But what you need to do is the key thing here is this drone needs to hit that truck. And so the strategy is going to be is that the x component of the drone is going to equal the x component of the truck when the y component of the drone is equal to zero. That's going to be our strategy. But in order to be able to do that, we need to find the acceleration, velocity, and position of the truck and the drone. Now notice that the truck is solely going in the x direction. The truck is only, ha only has one dimension. It's moving straight to the right. And it told me that the acceleration of the truck is a1. Then it told me the vol- and then I need to find velocity and position using calculus. Well, I know the velocity of the truck that's the integral of acceleration. Integrating acceleration, that's a1t plus, and it gave you an initial velocity. It gave you an initial velocity. It starts at the origin with an initial velocity v1, and that's where that extra constant is v1. And then as for your position, you integrate this, so you'll have one half at squared plus v1t, and then plus some constant, some initial position, but the truck initially starts at x equals zero. And so technically this has a plus zero. Now the drone though, the drone has an initial velocity we'll call Vm at some angle theta, which means a drone is traveling in two dimensions. It's got an x and a y component. And so what we need to do with this, uh, with that is find the equations for the x and the y component. So let's talk about the x component first. It told me that the x component of the drone, its acceleration is beta plus alpha t. So if I want to find velocity, integrate that. The integral of beta, beta times t, integral of alpha, one half alpha t squared plus, now you have to be very careful here. The initial velocity, yes, is vm. However, I'm solely looking in the x direction, and the x component of that initial velocity is adjacent to that angle, which is why the x component of your initial velocity is going to be vm cosine theta. Okay? Now that I have my velocity, you find position by integrating that. The integral of beta, 1 half beta t squared. Integral of this one right here is 1 sixth alpha t cubed, remember dividing the 3 on bottom, uh, plus this is a constant, so it's going to be that times t, the vm cosine theta times t, and then you want your initial position in the x. And initially, it said it started at x equals negative l. So there is the x of the drone. Finally, before we can even begin to hope to answer the question, we got to set up the y. Uh, the y component for the drone. And so I told you earlier that it said the usual vertical component due to gravity. Acceleration in the y direction, negative g. Okay? Now the velocity, okay, velocity is the integral of acceleration. So it's going to be negative g times t plus, and then the initial velocity in the y, 
I want the y component of my velocity, that's a vm sine theta, it's opposite the angle. And then finally, if you want the position in the y direction of the drone, that's the integral of your velocity. So that's where I get the negative one-half gt squared, plus this vm sine theta t, and then plus the initial position in the y, and it said initially it started at y equals h, whenever t is zero, so plus h. Now that I have the equations for the truck and the drone, and I've gotten all the components into account, now I can answer the question. And in order to answer this question, we need the x component of the drone to equal the x component of the truck whenever the y component of the drone is equal to the y component of the truck. That's in order for it to hit, the x's and y's got to match up. Now the y component of the truck is zero. Right, it's, we're going to assume it's at y equals zero, okay? Uh, we don't know the height of the truck, so we're going to assume it's like really flat. I don't know. But we're going to set the x of the drone equal to the x of the truck. So I'm setting the x of the drone equal to the x of the truck. And I want the y of the drone to equal the y of the truck. And that's it. This is obtain the equation relating these variables. And you're done, okay? That is it. You just need to know when to take a derivative integral and then how to apply it. But it did say solve for the necessary value of alpha if all of these values are zero. So let's go ahead and do that. And so taking a look here, if I make beta, L, VM, and A1 all zero, a lot of stuff goes away. And what I'm left with is a system of equations, which you're going to have left over on this side after you plug all of a zero into all these values. You'll still have that one sixth alpha t cubed. And on the right side, you'll still have that V1T. And then for the Y component, you'll still have this negative one-half GT squared, and you'll still have that plus H, you know, and that's still equal to zero. And so what you're going to do is a simple system of equations to solve for alpha. Doing a little bit of algebra for alpha, alpha would be 6V1. That T would cancel with one of the T's here, and so divided by T squared. But I don't know what T is. This is what I meant in the previous video when I said you're going to use the components to help each other solve for it. Because I don't know what T is. But you can use the Y components to, to solve for T. And so doing a little bit of algebra to solve for T squared, you know, um, taking that H and multiplying the 2 over, dividing by G, I trust you all can do algebra, you are in physics. T squared is equal to 2H over G, which is great because now I can put T squared in terms that are known. Very important that all your final answers are in terms that are known, unless it says obtain an equation that could solve for it. Whenever you solve for something, your final answer better have terms that are given or known. If not, then you need to put it in terms of that. But anyways, plugging 2h over g into the denominator, it simplifies to 3v1g over h. Okay, That's how you deal with 2D kinematics. Same thing. Set up your equations and answer the question. And that's it. So this was a good uh, medium level problem. Join me in the last video that I have for 2D kinematics and we'll do a pretty tough one.